Washington's healthcare system is undergoing a transformation. Healthier Washington is our state's plan to reshape healthcare and cultivate a culture of health with three core strategies. Improving how we pay for services by rewarding quality over quantity. Building healthier communities through a collaborative regional approach. Integrating how we meet physical and behavioral health needs so that healthcare focuses on the whole person. As a nurse, you are essential to this effort. Your unique expertise and reputation as a trusted source of health information gives you incredible potential to lead healthcare reform. Whether it's at the bedside, in a clinic, school, or any other setting where you might work, the conditions in which people are born, grow, live, work, and age, known as the social determinants of health, combine to affect the health of individuals and communities. A person's level of education, employment, and income is the single biggest predictor of their health status, more so than healthy behaviors, access to and utilization of clinical care, and their physical environment. Acknowledging that health starts in our homes, schools, and communities is the first step toward building a culture of health. Really feel like housing is health care. You know, this is really what's needed for people in our buildings is health care, mental health care, um, medical care, um, stuff with their addiction, and so really that's what's going to keep people in housing and support them. And they can't get those services out on the street, and so they're through this vicious cycle of going in and out of those services, like an emergency room for instance, when really they need to be in housing and be supported by us and bring the services to them. At Plymouth Housing Group over the years we've grown, we have really felt the need to bring all the services in-house for Plymouth. So everyone is basically on our staff, our case managers, our volunteer coordinators, our property management folks. The one group that isn't on our staff is nursing, but we have found it's really, really important for our residents. And so we partner with um, Neighbor Care Health, and they're funded through health care for the homeless and neighbor care themselves to bring nurses into our buildings. We actually have nurses in five of our buildings right now, our permanent supportive housing buildings. And we just feel like that's vital to our residents. What's really important is that all three of those areas, nursing, case management, and property management, are all working together behind the scenes to really be effective um, and really be holistic around the life of that resident. And the main thing, reason for that is because these folks have been homeless for a long time and have a lot of trust issues. They haven't been treated well in the medical system, in the hospitals, for instance, or out in the community. And by coming in, there's a whole trust building that happens, so all those teams are working together to build that trust to make life better for each individual. If we suggest to our diabetic client to be, you know, eating um, only this much meat with a meal and having two servings of vegetables, fresh vegetables, and um, and only, you know, this much carb or this much carb, you know, we can do all these like little hand jives and give them a lot of papers and sheets that tell them what to do, and they nod and they say, okay, yep. I got it, I got it, and they can tell you everything you said back and you really feel good about it. But if um, their food stamps have run out and they don't have an income and they sleep on the street or in a shelter and the nearest grocery store is over a mile away, so that's a really big deal. So just making sure your client can follow through I think is huge. Um, finding out what their, the factors of stress are in their life can make a really big difference. Um, you know, if there's something going on with your client where you're like, well, why haven't you been checking your blood sugar? You know, or, or, or uh, why, why haven't you been taking that medication? And 
You know, it's because they have a really stressful home life. Um, their neighbors are yelling all night, all the time. There's a drug dealer that lives on the corner and they're trying to stay clean or all sorts of stuff like that. Um, community has a huge impact on how we live and, and what we do um, to stay healthy. So um, just remembering that. I think one of the biggest things is just access, like really assessing if clients have access to the things that you're asking them to do. So if you're meeting with a client and you're telling them that you want them to be taking insulin this way, like do they have a fridge to keep their insulin cold? I mean, we had a client who was living in his car who needs to take insulin twice a day in August, the heat of the summer, he would pass out and his car was so hot. Um, and so we helped get a mini fridge to like keep his insulin cold. and. Um, Thinking outside the box a little bit as a nurse, so thinking about, A, just asking, you know, do you have access to food? Where do you get your food? I mean, if they're eating at shelters, um, it's probably processed food. That's what gets donated. Um, do they have transportation to get to appointments? Um, and really taking that extra step to advocate. The nurses with Kitsap connect, um, they're reliable, um, and they're there for you. you know, they were there for me. It's very complex about the homeless. Some of them want to be homeless, I admit that, but most of us don't. Um, we want jobs, ones that can't work, um, want a place to live. It could happen to anybody one paycheck away from homelessness, losing your home, your grandmother could become homeless, your sister, your brother, anybody can become homeless. Getting my housing has really impacted my health. I know I have a place to be at night. Um, I don't have to worry about being on the streets or in a shelter. Um, I'm very leery of a lot of people um, because of my background. Um, I feel safe. I can lay down and know I can sleep and not have anyone bother me. Um, I, the food, I can come here and get some. Um, I do get help with the food stamps, so that helps. Um, you know, uh, I can come here to eat if I need to, to the Salvation Army. Um, and having a place to cook what I want, and a refrigerator to keep my own food in, um, that really lifts a lot of um, worry from me. Asking your patients the right questions about some social factors that affect their lives can shape more effective interventions. Do they have access to educational, economic, and job opportunities, healthcare services, housing, clean drinking water, fresh food, transportation, public safety, social support, or other factors? There are lots of programs out there that people can access. That's food banks, sometimes that's mental health, sometimes that might be dietary advice. Um, and a lot of times people aren't even aware that these programs exist. And if they are aware, they don't know how to access or they might have a language barrier. And one of the things that as a nurse I can do is help refer people to the proper place. Um, whether that's giving them direct education and contacts at the bedside or letting our discharge planner know that this family may very well need some food security help or they might not have a primary care doctor, they might not have access to mental health services and can we try to make sure that that happens. And I think nurses are in a really pivotal role in the healthcare system that they have really personal connections with patients and even though our time at the bedside often feels short and rushed, we still have those moments to connect. Look beyond your patients. Are you aware of the social inequalities people are experiencing in your community? 
How do programs, practices, and policies in the area affect the health of individuals, families, and communities? Are there agencies that are working to tackle broad social issues? Do they need board members or committee members? Lend your expertise. As a nurse, you are solution-oriented and equipped with valuable knowledge and can offer great insight. As a nurse, you are already a vital part of Healthier Washington. Here are some things you can do to become more engaged in this statewide effort. Engage in your regional accountable community of health. Join the hashtag Healthier Wa conversation on social media. Stay informed. Join the Healthier Washington email subscription. Visit Healthier Washington and WCN websites. If you are the employer of nurses, join the Sentinel Network to help inform about health workforce trends, demands, and shortages. So many of the organizations that are effective at addressing the social determinants of health are nonprofit organizations and social service organizations, many of which run on boards or are run by boards. And they're often looking for people to sit on a board or people to volunteer with their organization. And nurses can easily step into that role. We have the knowledge, we have background, we have uh, comfort in those sort of settings of responsibility to help discuss and make decisions and follow through with long-term plans. And I think that's an easy way for nurses to step into social determinant issues. Our opportunities for health start long before we need medical care. Let's ensure all Americans are as healthy as they can be. Let's create a healthier Washington. Washington Center for Nursing and Healthcare Authority.